Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. It's episode 70. Yeah, 70. And my, oh my, has the world changed in just a week. (laughs) Yeah. We now have a new president. Who would have thought President Trump? Wow. What a paradigm change. I think we have some things to talk about. Well, I can imagine that there's a few folks kind of skeptical about the future of uh, our new president. And, uh, you know, uh, rightly so. But at the same time, I think all of us should give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, It's one thing to be running for election. And, of course, you've got to play the game. And it's a game. It's, It's politics. And so we saw the good, bad, and the ugly, no doubt. Mostly the ugly. <laughs> and then... Uh, then when the, the smoke clears and the, the responsibility uh, gets laid on his plate, uh, I think you'll see a, a more, what we want to see, a more mature <laughs> Mr. Trump uh, uh, come to the forefront of uh, our leadership. And I think he will. Um, he's not a stupid guy. He's just different. <laughs> and you got to remember, he uh, he's never been a politician, so... He didn't have to act like one all that time. He had to be a businessman and a radical and and play the game of that. Doesn't make excuses for things that some of you guys were offended by, and and us too. But uh, uh, you can't constantly live in the past. I think all of us could honestly say that there's stuff in the past that if we were to run for president might haunt us. <laughs> so, look at me. I mean, I make all these videos and things like that. Well, I'm sure one of my videos, if I riled somebody up, I would I would make it past the um, uh, pri- uh, primaries. <laughs> so, but, yeah, um, the big thing is change. And, and I think what's been really interesting about this whole thing is watching the looks on all the people's face that were shocked, especially the media. And it was so humbling and, and humorous to watch the media say, how could we have gotten this so wrong? And and then question themselves, like, what are we doing? We we didn't see this happening. Um, we need to change, too. And so the blank look at everybody's face was amazing on election night. And... Uh, I guess I guess I'm gonna have to say I, I'm not. I was actually I actually supported having Trump come in because you've heard me over and over again about the health care and things. Like that. That's my concerns, and uh, we really needed someone to go in and kick you know wake up everybody. And so this is definitely a wake up. Now, of course, there's you know uh, proof in the pit pudding. They say is it's time to uh, get in there and can he actually rock the boat and get some unity? So uh, um, I talk about this a lot in, in another show I do called Paradigm Chimes. And I think it's fair to say, and I, I made a Paradigm Chimes called uh, Trump Wins um, and uh, Peer Pressure Loses. And so that's really what happened here is you think about when we're in high school and you get all these kids saying you got to be cool, you got to do this or you got to wear that or this is the latest hairstyle and stuff like that and what is uh, interesting to observe by all this is he didn't follow the rules he didn't follow the peer pressure he didn't follow the republicans he didn't follow the democrats he didn't follow, follow typical politics he followed his heart and he followed what he thought he was hearing in the public and the public spoke <laughs> So, peer pressure loses. So, Trump wins, peer pressure loses. So, now that we've got the responsibilities, all of us, to, and I, I want to put emphasis on that, is we have 
still have traditional leaders out there, um, Republican and Democrats, and it's and we made it clear that we want to change. But just like me, just like um, a lot of folks, we get stuck on our own ways. We think, you know, um, a certain way, and sometimes we have to be convinced or pushed to think like a millennial or something like that. So we have to do the same thing with our leaders. We have to push them. We're going to have to constantly still, we can't just expect Trump to be our miracle. Now it's Trump and support and from not only his peers, but us to push our leaders, our senators, our congressmen, to work in the behalf of what we truly want for change and what is for America. And, and the other thing is, I think as Americans, we're kind of just speaking out saying, let's be a little more selfish. Let's take care of us. So that brings me to something that I probably need to address. I, I, I have always been uh, on the show here kind of concerned, and I still am, about how people are using, especially young generation, RVing as an excuse to do this quote unquote RV freedom to immediately go into RVing and, and then declaring themselves as minimalists and then going out and traveling the world without buying a house, without um, being um, grounded, you might say, um, have, you know, getting married and have a family and all the traditional things. And I'm still, I, I've never regretted it and I still support it and I still think that's the kind of foundation that America needs. Um, and maybe when we see change coming on, people will say, well, maybe the American dream is within my reach now. You know, a beautiful house, two-car garage, um, and two cars in a driveway, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I guess there's times where I'm going to have to say, well, maybe I have, I'm part of the pure group of uh, tradition and maybe tradition isn't always um, the way to go. Maybe being independent, maybe feeling like I'm entitled, maybe feeling a little more selfish for myself um, and, and not always follow the crowd might be something I need to consider. <clears throat> At the other side of things, how far do you sway to the, you know swing to the left? And so that's going to be a tough one for me. But I'm I'm going to like acknowledge that I need to keep that in mind when I'm seeing when I'm seeing I I just, I just get so distressed of seeing. Uh, I'm watching one couple right now that they were traveling for like a year. Uh, she's pregnant, and they are living in a house that was loaned to them, and that because they didn't have a house, and now they're living, you know. But they are at least making a transition of being more, uh, more of a foundation. But they're not doing it themselves. Everybody's like helping them, doing it for them, and then uh, another family member gave them a car to use because their van or caravan that they used uh, for traveling isn't practical. And I guess, and then I, my next question is like, what are they doing for insurance, and and what kind of, I mean, what kind of parents are those? That uh, is that a good set of parents or not? I mean, are they providing for their family, or are they? Pro Everybody around them seems to be providing for them so they can have a family. They're not living up to themselves. They're not independent. They're living off of other people and I just worry that more I see more and more of that of well I'm going to travel to the United States and but you got to fund me to do it I need you to you know <laughs> and, uh, and I have no problem with that I think Patreon and all those things are a great program um, I still think it should be towards people that have legitimate businesses that having the support to help support their business and, and their growth is really where that fits in not to be their total income to hey my transmission's down can you help fund me um i i i'm i'm struggling with that and uh, i'd love to hear your opinions and your comments on this kind of stuff 
Um, maybe I'm old fuddy-duddy, but I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm totally a fuddy-duddy on this thing. I'm worried. See, just like the Trump thing all that, it's a big illusion. Uh, and, you know, there's voters out there. People just didn't count. They just didn't. And so I still think some of these young people are seeing these videos. There's only, a, you know, the ones that are making the videos are the ones that are doing these kind of uh, crazy things. But the reality, I'm out here. I, I'm out here. I am here. What the most is the reality is that's not what's going on. There isn't that many people that are just young couples running away from the world and trying to get their freedom and not be part of the establishment. That's not what I'm seeing out here. I'm seeing RV retirements. I see RV people working. I see half and half, just like me and Sherry. One's working, one's not because of health care. I'm seeing uh, all kinds of uses for RVing along with just good old retirement and traveling and and, and that's actually a minority that I'm witnessing. And uh, uh, so, and you don't see much that you don't, it's hard to believe that because you're not hearing that many videos and that many shows about that. You're just seeing these shows of RV freedom and live the lifestyle and get on out here and, and minimize and get rid of your stuff and live small. And all that, and I have news for you. Those are just a handful of people that have shows. So it looks like there's a lot of them. And the reason they have shows is because, well, one is it, it, it creates income. They need money because living on the road, then um, not even being in work camping, they're really setting up a fund me program. And uh, so they'll do all these great things and cooking shows and all these little um, things. And our company does that too. But we're a company. We're actually a company that pays taxes. And when donations and things come in, we literally have to put it on the books. And we literally have to answer to Uncle Sam. Unlike what we're seeing is like, find me, they get the thing put in their pocket, unreported income. Um they can't get away with it with like YouTube and stuff. They'll get 1099. But anyway, uh, <laughs> times are changing, folks. And I, I guess I got to change with it too. But at the same time, uh, I, I want to make sure our listeners are hearing really what's going on. And, and we want to be a media that is not being pressured by pre um, our peer group. Um, which is pretty obvious. Um, I, I haven't supported a lot of rallies. I haven't supported a lot of organizations. Um, not that I have. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I just don't want to be influenced by them. And so uh, uh, we can speak our mind. And I don't care if we um, if we actually get a, a particular group upset with us. Unless we legitimately have made a mistake, and then we we actually need to be humble and apologize. But no, I um, we're a very independent and non-influenced um, media in, uh, entity for RVs and RV lifestyle, and that's really what we're talking about. Not the products, not the tips and stuff. We're really into the RV lifestyle and what's going on out here, and uh, we embrace them all, and even. Even the young is that I keep kind of, I'm concerned that it's important that the reality of what this lifestyle is about, if you're going to try to do it at a young age. Um, and as you, you know, a parent who's, my kids are now in their 30s, it's important that they had skills. It was important they knew how to work. It was important that they had that foundation of education. And so then, after that, they can do anything they want and also be able to fall back on that stuff if some of their plans go amok. And so, there we go. Anyway, congratulations to uh, President Trump, oh, well, elect President <laughs> Trump. And it's very interesting uh, to see the change, and I think we should embrace it and be open-minded and give him a chance. Uh, let's give him a chance. That's all I ask. Um, uh, 
if it would have been Cl- I was actually assuming it was just going to be Clinton and uh and I would just live with that and just all right that's this is the cards that are dealt to us but now we got this change and not only that we have republican popular um numbers in all the different uh house congress and uh and, and things like that so anyway interesting and it will be fun to watch i hope as the future goes on so we'll see another thing that i'd like to bring up that's kind of based off of the election a little bit is the voice of the worker the voice of the little guy us (laughs) us guys has been actually awakened and it's been kind of interesting and and then put it into rv terms is how many people are in RVs because, well, the recession beat the heck out of them and they decided to use an RV to recover? How many are using RVs because they have medical condi- conditions and are being wiped out by medical costs and uh, supporting that? And then there's a lot of people in RVs that move to different places so they can be close to a hospital for cancer treatment and things like that. And then uh, how many people are in RVs that... Maybe you went through a divorce and they have little income and uh, maybe it's a single housewife that was uh, divorced and can't, you know, uh, needs, a, needs a good place to live but needs to keep the cost down. Well, there's RVs for that. And so it will be really interesting to see if the middle class and low income can recover by, uh, in the next few years as if the promises were kept that manufacturing did start transferring back to the United States. And and then all of us will start going, you know what, I need to get a job. I, and welfare is not the popular thing to do. Getting a job is. Um, or having health care that um, is available to us and not be such a burden. Uh, I mean, we're talking burden now. And so, of course, the new folks there are saying, well, that's the first thing we're going to wipe out. Well, that's great, but <laughs> what's going to replace it? So do they realize that health care for a lot of people with just regular issues, and then not to mention as you get older, you have much more, you know, a lot more issues. It's just tearing people up. And, and then, you know, even with Medicare, you say, well, they got Medicare. Well, it covers 80%. So you go in a hospital for six days and you got a fifty to hundred thousand dollar bill, and then you got eighty percent of that uh, of a hundred thousand. Okay, you still have a twenty thousand dollar bill, and you're sixty five or seventy five. Let's say where are you going to get that money? Well, you're not working anymore. You got Social Security, and that's a fixed income. So or maybe even a pension, and it's still a fixed income. It's major, major money. So then, of course. Uh, uh, folks get what's called supplemental inter- um, uh, uh, insurance that support their uh, so their Medicare, and c- so the supplemental is to cover 80% of it to 20%. Is that the craziest thing you ever seen or heard of? Anyway, but it's been going on for that way forever, and that's traditionally five to a thousand dollars a month for that, and that's on our elderly's backs. So or aging um, folks. And so, uh, yeah, so having and seeing the middle class speak out and lower uh, income speak out and put such a, uh, and catch the world off guard saying, you're not going to ignore us anymore. We're doing some really crazy things out here to survive. And RVing is a big part of that. To survive, to to have a life of happiness and, and maybe be able to do things in your life. People are using RVs as a way, of, as opposed to owning a house or living in apartments or renting uh, or, buy, or having a mortgage for an alternative lifestyle so they can actually enjoy life because the hardships of trying to own a home and or buy uh, get rent in uh, you know, inner cities and stuff is ridiculous. And so, you know, Americans just don't sit, you know, well, some do, <laughs> sit there and just take it. They don't, they <laughs> roll over in their graves, I guess. Um, 
we kick, we kick back, we fight back. And so we do it, we find ways to make things still work. And, and that's a lot of things that we talk about with the RV lifestyle. The RV lifestyle, although I wish I was just saying it was like, woohoo, you get in your RV and travel and see this country, but it's not true. It's a handful of people are doing that. But the biggest majority are using the RV as a lifestyle to have a normal lifestyle. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to say it. So, um, I, I, once again, I'll go back to the election again. It's like, all right, we now, be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Now we need to continue this and, and, and tell our leaders, our senators, our congressmen and stuff, how we feel and what needs to be fixed. And so all of us that are 55 and older, and, and we know health care is our biggest thing, we need to speak up and keep the pressure on and, and tell them what we need. And uh, when it comes to jobs, we need to let the... Uh, and I'm not young anymore, so I don't, it doesn't impact me as much, but we need to make sure that we have ways of... Uh, of uh, people being able to live off the income that they make and uh, inflation and things like that are all a big impact on people uh, you know you can make 15 bucks an hour and if you can't afford an apartment or a house in the inner city at 15 bucks an hour you got a problem <laughs> really you really do and yet that's a, a typical wage so yeah we got a lot of work to do but it's all up to us we all need to do our part, and we need to, we really ruffled some feathers. And, uh, and there's other folks that are just upset because they didn't get their Democratic candidate, uh, Clinton, in there. The thing is, we need to get together with them, too. There is some commonalities. So, uh, yeah, time to unite, time to speak out, time to support our new leadership. Time to continue putting the pressure on and do it, of course, peacefully and logically and businesslike and professional. That's the way to go. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is history and I got to talk about it and how, to, how it's going to affect the RV industry and, and how it's already affected it uh, before and after. So, it's going to be interesting to watch. So keep an eye out. You'll see you know, not only does it affect the whole world, but even the RV industry is going to be affected by this. We'll see. Just watch. Well, okay. Time to change the mode a little bit here. And I want to talk about expectations of being an RVer as opposed to having a home. And, uh, you know, I like to always kind of take all sides. And and so I am a full-time RVer. And uh, I'll tell just a little bit of brief history. I've had 25 years or better of owning my own home, raised my kids in a normal home environment. Sherry and I both worked professional jobs. Kids had normal public schools. Um, during their teenage life, we did a lot of hunting, fishing, uh, had, had a mini farm. We used to raise game birds, kind of gave the kids kind of an opportunity to see the real world of of uh, making your own food and, and farming and things like that. And so along with, after that, internet companies, things like that. So as the kids became adults, some of them actually worked in my companies and stuff, kind of like Trump. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I've I've had the normal living in a home thing. And, but right now, Sherry and I are full-time RVers. Now, I don't want you to... You know, I'm not... I'm taking the neutral side of things as I love RVing. We're doing it. Obviously, we like it. And we're doing it because it's a nice lifestyle. And, it's, and it does keep our, our overhead low. But I want to talk about... These folks are saying, well, I'm, I think I'm getting ready to buy an RV in one or two years. And we're going to sell our home and go hit hit the road and stuff. And I want you to just go through this next module with me as be cautious. 
and really, really visit your feelings and your heart and also really look at your future, depending on how old you are. And I'm going to ask yourself, I'm going to ask a few questions and make statements of what Sherry and I think about all the time and see if they apply to you before you make this big decision. And I'm talking about becoming a full-time and where do you, in fact, you literally sell your house and, and, and even embrace some of this minimalism stuff and all that. And so I ask you right now, especially if you're in a home or renting a home, is do you think you're going to miss a yard? Do you have pets? Do you know that once you become a full-time RVer, your pet will never set foot on their own backyard ever again. They'll be at everybody else's backyard. And in fact, you'll be using dog parks used by hundreds of dogs and, and, and who even knows how sanitary those are. Um, you'll be in areas that, like me, we're in the desert. We came from the Northwest. There's things that threaten my pet's life here. Are you going to be willing? Uh, are you? Do you like? Do you like being in your yard? Do you like gardening? Do you have uh, times where you just like to enjoy your own space um, and do your own kind of things in your backyard, whether it's barbecuing, things like that? Out here, it's pretty hard to have a full time, a full size barbecue. Most people have a little mini things, and uh, some people pack a full size <laughs> barbecue. I don't know how they carry them, but they do. Are you willing to give that up? Really, are, are you willing to give that up? And uh, for me, as, as time goes on, I constantly grow. I'm always trying new things and I have some new interests. Uh, one is uh, we do other shows and I need a, I'd like to have a studio and I do all kinds of options to do that. And uh, also there's some product things I'd like to try. There's some things that I never had time to do because I worked 9 to 5 and now I'm retired. I still like to make money and I like to do stuff, but I also like working for myself. And so there's a few things I want to go after, and I'm not naming them that much here. Is, is, um, but there's some hands-on products that I always have kind of envisioned that I'd like to try to make and sell them and I need a shop to do that or a garage and I need for like a uh, studio I need a room some of my own where I can keep my lights up and have my green screens and stuff like that I can't do that in an RV do you have the same problem will you have the same problem and what about your health um, and in climate and places that you live RVs I don't care which ones you see, are not really designed for full-time living. Um, they're hard to heat. They don't retain their heat that well, and they're hard to cool sometimes. And uh, if you run your heating a lot or run your air conditioning a lot, they're not known for durability and will probably be replacing your air conditioning units or heating units quite a bit. Now, hot water heaters are really not designed to be full-time use. Although, like Sherry and I, for a year now, we've been in this RV and it's held up. Uh, we uh, Are you willing to put up with that? Um, but, you know, there's other sides of, you know, uh, the cost of your overheads down, more of the money you make, you get to keep. But is it all about money? I mean, especially if you're going into retirement, is it about money anymore? Um, but there's pleasures in life that I've enjoyed, uh, having my things in place and having a, um, um, in an RV, you're constantly pulling something out, but you have to put it back. You can't leave anything set up. Um, uh, you can't do a jigsaw puzzle in here cause it takes up a table. Um, I can't leave lights up that I do for recording videos. I do keep my podcast stuff up, but we've sacrificed losing our table. Um, are you? Is that going to bother you? Um, maybe you want a really elaborate... Maybe you're in a gaming. Wouldn't it be nice? You know, I mean, there's always a place where you have your computer set up, or you have a room, you can uh, 
put on your headset, do your thing, uh, and always have things in place. You don't have to put it away. You're set up. Um, I mean, there's nothing worse than some of these situations. Like, if I want to do a green screen thing, it's a major operation here in the RV to set up a green screen and then get my lights right. And, of course, the lights I'm using aren't as powerful as the ones I re used to use in the past because they're too big and bulky to be setting up in, in an RV. So, really, ask yourself, are you going to miss those things? I know it sounds, oh, no, I won't miss it and stuff. Really, really, really need to think about that. Is Because Sherry and I go through those emotions. We go through those feelings. I miss having my own home. I miss something that's mine. And I don't like the fact that someone says, I can't park my car next to my RV because it's on. we can't have things in the grass. You're on, constantly going to be on somebody else's terms when it comes to your your things that you do own, your car, uh, how you park your car, how you park your RV, how you set up things, what things you can have outside, how you can um, you can't let your you, know, how, you can't let your par pet run free, even if they're a well-controlled dog or a cat. Um, society and the rules at RV parks say no. Um, and you always say, well, what if I'm not in a park? I stealth camp or boondock. Well, what about safety? What about unfamiliar areas? Is that going to concern you at all? What would keep me as an evil person? Seeing somebody was uh, pulled off on the side of the road, sleeping in a rig, and I just knock on the door, pull a 44 on them, 45, I don't know what they call them, and demand their money and electronics and uh, maybe at the same time I might assault your wife or something. What's going to stop me? You're out in the boonies. There's nobody around. You're at the mercy. You don't have neighbors. Have you thought about that? And I don't the consistency of of having um, things in place and uh, as far as in a household and having appliances that you really thoroughly enjoy. Uh, a shower, full-size shower that's yours, that you know is clean and it wasn't used by a dozen people that day. Or a nice hot bath bathtub where you can sit back. Some people like to get bubble baths and candles out and relax and listen to music. That's gone. And, and it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, are you thinking this through? All the way. Are you going to miss this stuff? And of course, finances all dictate whether you can. Some people will still own a house and RV, but I'm talking about moving into being a full time RVer. Is it really what you want? I mean, I've met people that said, I'm very happy about it. They've been full timers for 10 years, 15 years, and proud of it and happy about it. And that's great. But it's kind of rare. And then maybe you'll say, well, maybe you'll do this for a while. And you'll get tired of it. Will you be able to go back? And it, and, and if you're going to travel, like how durable is the rig that you have and comfortable? Um, if you're going up to Alaska or the Yukon with your rig, is it strong enough and tough enough to handle those kind of roads and stuff? And... Maybe you're not a person that likes to fix things all the time. Uh, you know, a house too, you got things you got to fix and all that stuff. But an RV, you've got to be a mechanic. You've got to be an electrician. You've got to be a designer. You've got to be a troubleshooter. You've got to know air systems. You've got to understand tires. Um, you got to understand all kinds of things. And that, and that's good if you if if you do there's nothing wrong with that. Are you willing to? Are you gonna? You're gonna have to. You don't have a choice. I don't care how good a rig you got and how good an extended warranty you have. When you're stuck in the middle of the desert between Fallon, um, Nevada, and and Las Vegas out in the boonies, and you got a blown tire, how are you gonna be innovative enough to get out of that mess? And maybe no cell phone. 
<laughs> and does that recognize the story that me and Sherry went through? Yeah. No cell phone. You need to be innovative. You've got to get that tire changed. You've got to fix the damage that it did and um, a panel that might have been flapping out with duct tape or whatever you need. Are you, is that okay with you? And that's, once again, it's okay. if you think you're up to it, super. Are you going to be up to it five years from now? Are you going to be up to it ten years from now? And if you go this route, will your finances support change in the future? If you say, oh, I think we'll just do it for five years. Well, then what? So I'm just bringing this up as food for thought. Is there, I, I always worry all these channels are saying, come join the freedom. Come join us. Get an RV. I, I'm the same way. I think you should get an RV. How you use your RV is important to think about and don't get caught up in the peer pressure. <laughs> I'm talking about peers a lot of what you're hearing on these channels. You need to be realistic. It may sound charming, just like Sherry and I really looked into sailing. But when you really, really look into sailing, it's like there's a lot of downtime and you and you and your wife may be sailing, let's say, and you're stuck in the boat together in a small thing and you can't leave and if you do leave you gotta use a dinghy or row or have a little motor to get you to shore um that's a little too much i'm sorry i love my wife to death been married 36 years i think that would just be a little too much and we do great in an rv there's no arguments here we get along great we're happy. Sherry loves the RV. We're content. But we do miss a home, too. And so I'm passing that on to you. It's like, will you have those feelings, too? And it's hard to imagine, especially if you're all pumped up to get out here and do this. And I think you should. And I'm not stopping you, and I don't want you to stop thinking that. But there's also the another side to the story is once you're out here, you know, and you're in RV parks, you hear every sound. You're in RV parks, there's some dark sides to you'll get next to some strange people. You'll hear arguments. You'll have a dog barking. You will see people with too much junk in front of their RVs. Loud motorcycles. Some people have, have Harleys that they bring with them. And they can be quite irritating. Some folks have people over all the time. So there's always talking and you can't... These RVs are too thin, you can still hear all the noise. Or someone plays their music too loud. Or there's someone that drinks too much. And uh, we had one guy run around here in his underwear. Because he was drunk. And just an older guy. I, I just, yeah, you just never know what's going to happen. So, t you know, we talk about tolerance and, and, and peer groups and all that stuff, but. Um, and we ha you do have those same kind of issues in a neighborhood, too, uh, if you had a house or an apartment. But once again, um, in the RVs, it could be actually a little more severe because um, they usually put the RVs pretty close together. And, uh, and then, you know, unreliable utilities. You may not have good electricity. You may not have good water or water pressure. You may have terrible Internet. Um, you may have support like bathhouses and, and, and stuff that are just filthy. Some RV places have pools and some don't. Some have game areas, some don't. Some have a community center and some don't. Have you thought those things over? And I really, I, I like, I'm bringing this up because you might appreciate me bringing this up now before you actually dive in and go, oh, dang. <laughs> So a lot of extended RV trips before you make that big decision is probably the best route. Go out in your RV for one week, two weeks, and move around a few times. Go through the routine and then and really observe, is this really what I want to do? Is this really going to make us happy? And is, is this going to support us five years from now or ten years from now? So anyway, once again... 
Food for thought. Yeah, like I said earlier in the show, definitely been quite a week. Interesting watching history happen. Uh, times are changing. Uh, I think we're definitely seeing the working class, middle class get recognized. And so it'll be interesting to watch the future and see how things go. I just want to urge everybody to be open minded and let's try to support the new uh, regime and see uh, see what happens. <laughs> um, worst thing that could happen is it could get better, huh? So anyway, uh, I also wanted to take the time to also remind you to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we didn't try to make a political stand here or anything. It's just interesting just to see how things panned out. But please uh, take the time to go to rvtalkradio.com. Go to the contact page. Give us a shout. Uh, if you got some things uh, you'd like to, us to talk about, some comments, good, bad, or indifferent, we appreciate you being professional. You can also contact me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com. Shoot me a note. We'd love to hear from you. And you can also go to our Facebook pages. One is for, uh, we have a Facebook page for RV Talk Radio. Uh, just go up to the top. It says message. Press that and just type away. And that actually goes straight to our cell phones. Same thing on RV Travel Buddy. Um, if you uh, like us to make a video or just do a podcast about a certain subject, uh, feel free to let us know if you get some comments or things you like we're doing or don't like. Uh, once again, just be professional. We'd be happy to oblige. And uh, anyway, it's always it's always fun to hear from you guys. We appreciate it. And also on the video version, um, feel free to leave comments below. We like it. So yeah, lots of things, lots of change, lots of RV news. <laughs> it's just never ending. I think there was uh, also one more little thing I wanted to talk about was RV prepping a little bit. Is uh, uh, you know, with everything that was going on with the elections and stuff, there was a lot of talk of interesting things that could happen between um, uh, hackers doing things to our power grid to all kinds of stuff, and you don't you don't know what to believe anymore. And of course, nothing happened. <coughs> of course, <laughs> by the time this uh, show comes out, maybe something does happen. But it did cause me to actually think about, you know, maybe I should stock up a little bit more in uh, water supply and, and food ra uh, things and a little bit more propane canisters. And so I got to admit, this week I actually uh, bought a lot more water than I normally did. Bought a few more propane canisters just to make sure I had things to cook with. I have full tanks. I filled up the gas tanks in all, all the cars and... I was a little bit cautionary, and I felt a little silly about it, and I even feel sillier right now because uh, really it's uh, been pretty calm. And um, of course, by the time the show comes out, maybe I'm I'll be, I'll be a hero. But uh, I don't think prepping is a bad idea. I think a lot of it can go overboard, but at the same time, um, you know, a lot of natural things could happen, not just man-made. That could cause us to be off the grid for a couple of weeks or something as things are getting repaired. And uh, it's a lot of things that run off of our electricity, our water, everything else. So having a little bit of backup and having some, uh, we do keep a week's worth of dried food in our RV. Plus, you know, we got our canned goods and all that stuff. And we always keep uh, a lot of food around for the cat and dog. And uh, I think that's really a good thing to do. Um, and... A lot of people, you can look at it as prepping or earthquake uh, awareness. Um, just being aware that you know we are very, very um, dependent on our resources, especially electricity. And if we were to lose that for a while, and it can happen between storms and things like that. Um, I, I, I can't, I'm sure you hear this all the time and stuff, but I urge you, and uh, Sherry and I have done it, is we actually uh, would be in great shape for up to two weeks and be pretty darn comfortable um, just with the little extra supplies we keep around here. And uh, so I, I urge you, you know, to do the same thing. I'd really hate to hear someone suffering that wasn't prepared uh, because our, uh, you know, we had a brownout or something down here in uh, Arizona for a week or two. And uh, of course, uh, luckily it's cooling down here, so heat would have been an issue during the summer. But uh, right now, our uh, climate's getting a lot cooler and tolerable. 
And so, uh, yeah, when's the last time you really asked yourself, am I prepared to have the power go down and stuff? We're quite fortunate with the RVs. If any indication of something bad's going on, first thing I'd do is make sure you fill up your water tanks. Uh, I know a lot of, if you're in an RV right now, RV park, you're connected to stuff. But um, <coughs> Sherry and I, uh, we do have solar energy on the top, um, just 80 watts of uh, kind of, uh, but it would help top off our, our batteries if we need it. We do have a, a, a 110 um, volt uh, uh, inverter. So we can play radios or anything we needed to do in case there was an emergency. Uh, we'd be able to survive pretty good. Um, other people do much better than us with more power uh, to their solar panels and stuff. But uh, we, we're in pretty good shape and a lot better than I would have normally been in. So anyway, I urge you to kind of visit that too. Is like Your RV can also be a nice little prepper tool. Uh, in case um, you're even at a house and you have an RV, uh, your house uh, uh, may not be able to tolerate a, 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 a you know refrigerators and things go down. But you know uh, uh, RVs, you know we have LP to go, uh, live off of, and so you could keep things refrigerated a little longer, transfer things to your RV in your yard if you had to. So uh, there's real benefits of having an RV for emergencies. Um, especially if you live in California or something like that or a hurricane comes through and uh, uh, your power is out for a couple of days, uh, RV might be a nice backup. So something to think about. Another thing you could do with your RV, another tool, another uh, uh, RV lifestyle. So there you go. Getting towards the end of our show, I want to thank you for listening. I want to remind you that we are now sponsored by goodmusicradio.com, which is an internet radio station we created and we own, and uh, lots of fun to listen to. If you get a chance, go to goodmusicradio.com, go right to the page there, and with your cell phone, just type it into your little browser in your cell phone, and hit the little um, link there. It says um, download mobile app and absolutely free and it's turns your cell phone into a 24 7 radio anytime you want and what's cool about it if, if the station is what you like which is almost uh 99.8 percent pure music uh, greatest hits of all cultures <laughs> um no rap and metal sorry um it's you can take it anywhere so i don't care if you're leaving the state whatever we can be there with you so uh yeah check it out you appreciate it it's uh uh, we're pretty proud of it. Uh, very little talk. Lots of fun to listen to. Lots of great music. And it's designed to be kind of music where you go, wow, I haven't heard that one in a while. And that's a good song. So anyway, uh, we appreciate it. It helps us out. Don't forget, we also have stickers for RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. And most of all, we also have Stuff Cinder dolls. Um, they're very cute with a little scarf that says RV Travel Buddy and has Cinder's name on it. Uh, it always helps us out. We do appreciate it. And of course, uh, getting the support that we do on the side of uh, on our websites, we do appreciate it. And if you get a chance, check out the chan uh, opportunity to be a patron. We appreciate that. It always helps everything we're doing. We are investing in a lot more equipment as we're going here. You kind of uh, can tell we're hinting about setting up a new uh, uh, studio. And that's going to require a lot more lights and a lot more equipment. So, yeah, we're uh, constantly growing and uh, with your help. So, And, by the way, the channel or the uh, RV Talk Radio is continuing to grow. Um, you don't see those numbers when it comes to YouTube. You, uh, we see them internally from uh, FeedBurner and, and where we, uh, we have our downloads. And so it's been growing very actively. We do appreciate having you as a listener. So... Please take the time to like our videos, like our, our our podcast, to share them, to subscribe. We will appreciate it. Tell people about us, and uh, let us uh, let everybody know it's, we're about the RV lifestyle. So anyway, once again, I want everybody to have a great week. We'll see you next Monday, and most of all, be safe and get yourself an RV. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe to our videos 
or become a patron supporter. As a patron supporter, Robin Shuri will give you exclusive information of behind the scenes stories. There is free gifts and explanations of how we make our videos, provided exclusively to our patrons. Thank you for supporting us.